Okay, now before starting to learn about the text box and the other controls, let's learn about what happens when someone opens the web application. What happens when someone type the domain name and then the data is previewed to him. Is this just the action that happens? Actually, no. There is a couple of steps before this happening. He first writes the domain name and then goes to the host. The host goes to the library or the DLL files and we will talk in detail about this uh, library file and the library file does some actions and then give the data that uh, transfer to HTML and send to the client okay but while the data is processed here there is a couple of actions that's happening we have actions on the application level, we have actions on the page level, and we have actions on each control level. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the application level. We have five actions that is taken before the application is started. We have application start, object creation, HTTP creation, dispose, and application end. So what happens on each one? First, the application start. It's so clear that the life cycle of an ASP.NET application starts when a request is made by a user. This request is to the web server for the ASP.NET application. This happens when the first user normally goes to the home page for application for the first time, as we said. During this time, there is a method called application start which is executed by the web server usually in this method all global variables are set to their default variables so if we want to find this application start method we can find it in the global.asx files let's switch back to the visual studio and there should be a file here called global.aspx of course it's not here because we wanted to create a blank application so we can go here add new item and search for global application class and let's not change the name let's leave it as it is add and here is it Here is what happened on every action when the application starts, when the user requests the website, uh, the host to uh, retrieve the data from the web application. Here is what happened. This file is fired the first one. Okay, so the first or all global variables are set to their default values at the start of the global application. Next stage is object creation it's the creation of http context http request and http response by the web server the http request uh, sorry the http context is just the container of the http request and http response objects the http request object contains information about the current request including cookies and browser information the HTTP response contains the response that is sent to the client. The next step is HTTP application creation. Well, the object is created by the web server. It's the object that's used by uh, to process each subsequent request sent to the application. For example, let's assume we have two web applications. One is a shopping cart application and the other is a newest website. For each application, we would have two HTTP application objects created. Any further requests to each website would be processed by each HTTP application respectively. Dispose. This event is called before the application instance is destroyed. During this time, one can use this method to manually release any undamaged resources. And the last step is application end, where uh, in this part, the application is finally unloaded from the memory. Okay, I don't, you, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by these 
steps and these events because we're not going further in this as we said we're gonna learn the basics first but I want you to know that if we switch back to visual studio all we, that we might use the thing common of course the application start the application start is used if you use a root configuration file or if you use a bundled configuration file uh, we're not gone going to talk too much about these configuration files but uh, in short the bundle config file is used to optimize the requests sent made by your browser to the server for calling for example javascript files and css files where you include them in all, all in one bundle and request them once this is good for your web application seo and the root config file is used to decide the customized way where you want your website root to work with you might want to work with friendly urls extensions downloaded from uh, nuggets or you might want to uh, decide the controller action and id parameters uh, other id parameters like in the mvc we're not going through this but let's focus on our basics and then next step we're going to learn about the page events and then start learning the controls